I'm Pastor Brian Coffey, and welcome again to 23 Days with God. Today we're going to consider God's justice. So let's prepare by reading from Psalm 37. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching coverage of the Winter Olympics, and one night I happened to catch a snowboarding competition. Now, I know next to nothing about snowboarding. I don't know a triple cork from a frontside 1080. They all look completely impossible to me. But I was watching as a snowboarder did one flipping, twisting move after another on the half, half pipe, and I noticed that the announcer seemed especially impressed with this guy. I mean, he was gushing with praise over what he called the greatest snowboarding run he had ever seen. But when the scores from the judges were posted, the announcer was shocked that they weren't higher. In fact, he was outraged. He eventually said something like, this is a terrible injustice. He was so outraged that I found myself outraged as well. I thought, how can those scores be so low? That's just not right. As human beings, we crave justice from athletic competition, to bullies on the playground, to justice in our society, to what's happening in the Ukraine. We crave justice. We want things to be made right. The Bible tells us we long for justice because we are created in the image of God and God is just. In fact, our desire for justice and our outrage over injustice is profound evidence for the existence of God, even in those who don't believe in him. But that's an argument for a different time. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we read, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Now, to say that God is just is to say that God is absolutely righteous in himself, that God is just and right in whatever he does, and that God alone establishes what is just and what is not. It's also to say that God and God alone has the authority to judge all injustice and sin. Now, this is a very good thing because it means that God will one day judge and make right all the injustice and evil in the world. But it's also a sobering thought, because it means, it means that God will also judge each one of us for our own injustice and sin. But here's the problem. We tend to want to write our own definition of justice. We tend to want to decide for ourselves what's right and what's wrong. We also tend to see injustice and sin in others, but not so much in ourselves. Another way to say this is that we judge ourselves much more leniently than we judge others. And by definition, that's not just or right. But the Bible also teaches that we as human beings are by nature sinful creatures. We are not perfectly righteous. We are not perfectly just. God's justice demands that all injustice and sin must be paid for, must be accounted for, must be punished. Therefore, we all deserve the judgment side of God's justice. That's what the Apostle Paul means in Romans when he says the wages of sin is death. But we know that God is not only just, he is loving as we'll hear later in this series. Paul writes in Romans 5, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As we look toward the celebrations of the Easter season, we acknowledge that at the very center of our faith stands the cross. And the Bible teaches that on the cross, Jesus bore the weight of all the injustice and sin of the world. And even more than that, he bore my sin and yours as well. By his blood, he atoned for, paid for our sin, thus satisfying the perfect justice of God. And by taking our place on the cross, he expressed the perfect love of God. The cross, then, is the perfect intersection of God's justice and his mercy, which we'll talk about tomorrow. So when you find yourself outraged over some injustice you see in the world, 
Thank God for creating you in His image. Thank Him for promising one day to make all things right again. And when you see injustice and sin in your own heart or actions, thank God for the cross and for the one who replaces your sin with His own righteousness. Thank you for joining us again today.